Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of All The Mods 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? And yes, I do understand that we have broken something, but we're not going to fix it because this is not my world, so I don't care. If you guys remember from the last episode, our plan for today is to try and get a fission reactor from mechanism, process fissile fuel so that we will get nuclear waste, process that waste in order to get polonium, and eventually get to the mecha suit. I wanted to make a mechanism reactor in our base because I thought maybe we would be able to control the radiation. You can see that it went really well. I actually thought that if we have it inside a box of obsidian, maybe that will help. But no, you just make an awesome bat farm. Anyhow, the final decision is that we are not going to have a mechanism reactor in the middle of our base because there is no way in the world that you can transfer that stupid nuclear waste into a gas tank or a quantum entangler porter and deliver it to a solar neutron activator. And no, you cannot break it. It gets worse. But I'm guessing now that we are here, we might as well try to see what happens if we cut off the water. Oh, the alarm went off. Nice. Well, at least we know that the explosion is not going to be horrible. Okay, I had a change of hearts and we are going to do this in the basement. I'm not that much worried about the explosion because I think I know how the reactor works so we can avoid an explosion. And I think if we are careful enough, we can also avoid radiation. We will see how it goes, but we are going to do this in the basement because it looks cool. So like any other multi-block structure from mechanism, this could be a maximum size of 18 by 18 by 18, but we're going with a 7 by 7. And of course, by 4. The corners and the bottom has to be made out of the fission reactor casing, and the rest can be made out of glass. And in order for the reactor to operate, we need the fission fuel assembly, which I'm going to put it in a checkerboard pattern, like this. And then we need to cap them with the control rod, like this. And that is basically our reactor. We just need to cover it and add the ports. So even without the ports, we can access the GUI. So that means we did not do anything wrong. That is good. It's a good start. It's not very good. And I think for the moment, this is the configuration that we're going to have. This one in the front is going to be for the fissile fuel. We have two ports on the sides, which is going to be for coolant, which is water. This one in the back is going to be for waste, and these two are going to be for steam. And I also have some logic adapters for the reactor so that we can control it using redstone. And just before we forget, we provide it with water. Okay, even with one port, it's filling in at a decent rate. Maybe we only need one. We're setting up this reactor just for testing and just to make sure that everything works so that later on maybe we can power a turbine and also get a lot of antimatter. But for the moment we do not have any use for the steam that it's going to produce, so we're gonna avoid it. So let me try to explain what I understood about the reactor. The reactor itself is not going to generate any RF. It's just going to take the fuel and water and it's going to give you steam so that you can power a turbine. It's also going to make a lot of nuclear waste and that is what we're interested in. If water runs out, the reactor will be superheated and there will be an explosion. If the steam tank gets full, there will be an explosion. And if the waste tank gets full, there's going to be a meltdown and a lot of radiation. We are providing the reactor with a lot of water, so it's not going to be superheated. We're getting rid of the steam. Now we need to take care of the waste. For a very weird reason, which I do not understand, the nuclear waste is also a gas. And you need to put it inside these radioactive waste barrels. And you cannot break them later on because radiation. So at this very moment, I can actually break them and there's not going to be an issue. But the moment that we get any sort of waste inside, we can no longer move them. Once we start the reactor and we start generating waste, there is no way of moving anything. So I think we should finish the entire system right now before we turn it on. So here is where we're going to get nuclear waste. We can use the centrifuge in order to recycle that nuclear waste into plutonium and use it again, or we can use a solar neutron activator in order to get polonium. And this is what we want, because if we put it inside the PRC, we will get polonium pellets, which is used for the mecha suit, and we can also process it further in order to get antimatter. But Antimatter at this very moment is far far away from us and the only thing that I'm interested in is polonium. And you might also notice that these guys are going to require access to the sky. So we need to dig. Are we good? Yeah. Now that we have the solar neutron activators, we need to have a PRC which I forgot to bring. And the only thing that our PRC is going to need is water. That's it. Because this one is a 1 to 1 ratio and how many polonium pellets do you think we need? Here is our PRC with water, power and we just need fluoride dust. But let us do a small recap. Over here we have a system which is making us the fissile fuel. 
The fissile fuel is going to be consumed by the reactor, it will superheat the water and it will make us steam and waste. We are extracting the steam and we are putting it inside ultimate chemical tanks and we have them on dumping excess. So we are basically voiding the steam because we don't need it right now. We are also extracting the waste and it is going inside these radioactive waste barrels. These barrels and these pipes cannot be broken. We are processing the waste using solar neutron activators and I think I need to cut down that tree because I don't know if the leaves are blocking it or not. Anyway, the solar neutron activator gives us polonium, then we convert it into polonium pellet inside the PRC. Just in case, I also made a backup of our world and I think we should be good to go. Let's go get the fuel. Oh, and by the way, have I mentioned that this isotopic centrifuge requires 300,000 RF per tick in order to make fuel? It's a stupid amount of RF, but um, it's okay, we have some. Yes, yes, it's filling in. We can activate you, hopefully, yes. Temperature is going up. Why? Okay, it's now stabilized. That is good. Are we getting waste? Yes, we are getting waste. It's just that I forgot to configure these guys. We need 1000 millibuckets for each pellet. That takes a while. But on a positive note, everything seems to be working. So, I'm happy. Actually, if we come to the controls, we can increase the burn rate. Now it's at 0.1 millibuckets per tick. Can we go to 0.2? Yes, we can. The heat goes up slightly. And just out of curiosity, can I go to one? That's a lot, I know. Actually, it's going relatively well. Maybe we should go to 10 and see what happens. Okay, 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 okay. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Because we were running out of water. Um, yeah, now we're getting a lot of steam. So if we want to get rid of the fuel faster, we need to get rid of the steam faster. Let's turn it off. The reactor itself is cooling down and I was hoping in the meantime we can work a bit on this area. There is a block from pneumatic craft and it seems to be blast resistance, but for that we need compressed iron. And it's always a very good idea to have TNT next to a reactor. But we should be fine, I hope. Yes, we are fine. So this is called reinforced bricks and it should be blast resistant. The rest or not. It doesn't look terrible. I kind of like it. Okay, so we do have a semi-blast resistant chamber, but explosions are the least of our worries. Our worries are about radiation. And talking about radiation, once you make the polonium pellets, you're going to get spent nuclear fuel, which is radioactive. I did a little bit of research and it seems that we have to put them inside these radioactive waste barrels. And they're going to get rid of that nuclear waste at a rate of one millibucket per minute. So it's going to decay eventually, but um, it's going to take a very long time. So I'm going to be the person who has a lot of nuclear waste under his base, but it's okay. Also, the issue that we have with the reactor itself and the steam cannot be solved like this because these ultimate gas tanks are not getting rid of the steam fast enough. I did try a trash can, but that doesn't seem to work. So eventually, if we want to mass produce polonium in order to get a lot of antimatter, I think the wisest decision is that we hook this guy up into a turbine. A turbine is also not going to be a permanent solution because whenever the RF buffer gets full, then it's no longer going to consume steam. But at least we're going to have a bigger buffer. And it does seem that what I read about the nuclear waste is true. We're losing it. It does not say that a polonium pellet is radioactive. So can I take it out without dying? Yes. <laughs> now that we have a reactor, this blast door actually makes sense. I think the first item that we need to craft is the modification station, which is basically our workbench for modifying the mecha suit. Why do you need RF? <laughs> okay. The mecha suit itself is also not that cheap. We're going to need netherite armor. And thankfully, we have a huge supply of netherite. So here is our chest plate, which looks really cool. Yeah, it looks amazing. <laughs> I love this. I did set the burn rate of the reactor to 0.9 and it seems to be stable. I actually AFK'd here for a while and we have the armor, except for the boots, which there you go. They're also ready. If we get two more pellets, we can also make the mecha tool. But unfortunately, I noticed that in order to make most of the interesting upgrades, we also need more pellets. And the way that you apply the upgrades is relatively easy. You just come to your modification station, put the armor that you want over here, add the upgrade. And this one was an energy upgrade. I already had one, but apparently you can add more. I was wondering why we're not getting any polonium. It's nighttime. I should sleep. While we are waiting for more polonium, I think we should also start working on auto crafting because for the moment we only have two CPUs and both of them are garbage. You know, I was working on making some CPUs and then I remembered, in order to get rid of the waste, we could have just made some spatial storage cells. 
and throw away the waste. But actually our reactor is not that big so it's not generating that much waste. So maybe for the bigger one we will do that. Cause basically we are transferring the waste into a new dimension. Anyhow I was thinking that we are going to have 6 CPUs over here at this level and then I'm also going to finish up this room. And as usual we are not very rich people so we are going to have a lot of crafting co-processors, one crafting monitor and I think 264Ks for the moment. I always say that we are poor and we cannot afford something better but these are decent CPUs. I just want them bigger. Slightly. And I also forgot that we don't need these guys anymore. So technically we can use them downstairs. Hello. I need a door. <laughs> Anyhow, let me fix the roof, fix the wall, fix the floor, and also fix that thing down there, and then I'll bring you right back. I have done a stupid amount of work on the basement, and I'm fairly happy with the results. This is going to be our basement. It's not finished yet because we also need a few rooms over here, maybe two of them. We need to switch the elevator to the pneumatic craft one, but for the moment, I'm okay with this. Oh, and by the way, these blocks are from the Psy mod. They're not very cheap, but they're also not that expensive. I also worked a little bit on our reactor room. I need to change this. I have fixed the roof on this side, also on this side, and I did not finish the back because I don't know what to do with that stupid hole, we kind of need it. And the reactor is now offline because I think we have enough pellets. We have 10 over here and 4 in the ME system. I made an extra atomic disassembler and a configurator because apparently we can craft something called a mecha tool. Oh, we can't. Oh, we can. They're just charged. Yes. There you go. And I do admit that the texture is amazing. It's really cool. Why is there a zombie? I think they are down here? Yes. Yeah, I should have put more torches. Anyway, we have this tool. Let's see what kind of upgrades we can get. Actually, there are not that many upgrades that we can craft, but we can craft a few. Like the attack amplification unit, which is going to increase our melee attacks. And it will stack to four, so I can make four. Excavation escalation is going to increase our mining speed, so why not? That will also stack to 4. Personally, I think Silk Touch is also going to be extremely useful, but this one is relatively expensive because it needs polonium. And of course, some of the alloys which I just made. I'm not going to make a vein mining unit because we already have vein mining in this mod pack, but this one looks interesting. Increases sprinting speed and jumping distance. I think I'm going to make only two of them for the moment because they need polonium. Locomotive boosting goes on the pants. Silk Touch goes on the tool. Attack also goes on the tool as well as excavation and i think while we are here we might as well add the energy units eight of them so you're going to hold more rf than my entire battery uh -huh. yeah the battery is dead we can charge it in the reactor but i'm thinking maybe we need more rf well it does not have to be fully charged for us to test it but let us see how fast can we dig it's not the best oh you can increase the efficiency to 128 Oh, it's insta mining. Nice. And we do have a boss mob. 37 health, 35. Okay, maybe our sword is better. Yeah, the sword is much better. Final thing that we should craft is the nutritional module. Automatically feeds the player nutritional paste when hungry. Out of every stupid thing in this recipe, I just missed the canteen. And that goes in the helmet, right? I was thinking how the hell this guy is going to provide me with nutritional paste. And apparently you have to put it inside the liquefier and then give it the paste. So you don't need a canteen. There are two more modifiers which are very interesting. One of them I think is going to give us flight and the other one is going to give us like a wand of traveling, but they need antimatter and we don't have it yet. And just out of curiosity, I want to see how well we are going to do against the guardian of Gaia. Let's do the fight. Oh, I'm missing a block. Sorry. Now you work, good. Of course I'm going to use my sword because this one is not going to do that much damage anyways. <laughs> It's not going so well, I think it's because of you. Cause when you run out of Psy energy, you will lose health. And also this is the problem with nutritional pace. You don't get that much saturation. On a very positive note, I'm still alive. This is nice. I was minding my own business and suddenly there is an invisible zombie. I can't find him. <laughs> he does hit me, but I don't know, I can't hit him back. Maybe we can set you on fire and know where you are? No, it is perfectly fine. I'm going to go inside here and he has only one way to come in and it's not working. You know, at least you should be burning. Did you take damage? I think he's dead. Okay, 
I can get back to work. Ever since I updated the pack, there has been a few changes and one of the most important ones concerns our greenhouse over here. If you guys remember, our main goal was to try and get a lot of insanium farmland for our botany pots over here so that they will grow much faster. Unfortunately, in the new update, you cannot put them inside the botany pot anymore and you have to put it inside the garden cloche. And the garden cloche is incredibly slow, so we need to come up with other solutions. This is a plant gatherer from industrial foregoing and one thing that I want to check is that can we put the farmland down? Yes. And can we plant the seed? Yes. So if I bone mill it, will you take the seed? Yes. That's not very good. Oh, and the farmland is gone. Uh -huh. I'm so happy that I did not use the supremium one. If I have to travel between here and my base all the time to craft something or to get something, it's going to be slightly painful. So can we make a wireless terminal? No. And you know how to make a terminal. Good. I think we have everything to make a security terminal. Yes. And one wireless access point. So I'm actually going to set it up down here and I think we can just sync it like this. Yes. Oh, I forgot you cannot craft in this one. You can just get items. I can make it indestructible. <laughs> okay. If I remember this correctly, the range on this guy is going to be garbage. So we need wireless boosters. So look at the energy consumption. Right now, it's 8 RF per tick. If I put all 64 inside, it's 4000 RF per tick. And the range is 500 meters. I'm not complaining because I'm not paying for the RF. We have a creative cell. Alright guys, what is the plan? I think our next order of business is to try and get into elemental craft. This guy over here. And just in case you did not know, this is a magic mod based on the four elements of life. Fire, earth, air and water. And it is going to provide us with a few quality of life improvements like spells, as well as some altars in order to accelerate plant growth or to harvest them. Also for breeding. Nice. Anyway, the quality of life improvements of this mod are optional for us because we can get them from other sources. What is not optional from us is the pure rock, which is used in the pressure chamber in order to make the creative essence and that is used in order to make creative items, which is our ultimate goal. We have played a little bit with this mod and we have discovered that we have to find these aura nodes and extract the elements from them. That was air. This one is water. This one over here is fire. And way back over here, we have earth. I did spend a crazy amount of time trying to find the nodes, but then I noticed that if you go to the map, you might notice some black dots. Those are the nodes. And just to refresh your memory, in order to craft everything in this mod, all you need is an element container. And you have to start with a small container because that's the only one that you can afford. And then you need an element extractor which goes on top. That will extract the element and put it inside the container. Also, if by accident you place a block on the node, the node is gone. Anyways, I was thinking that we start dedicating an area to elemental craft and start automating everything using applied energistics. I have already selected this island and you might notice it's slightly far away from our base. So we're going to need a quantum ring for our applied energistics. A quantum ring requires a singularity and a singularity requires a matter condenser. So here is a matter condenser. We need to provide the matter condenser with power, 164k ME storage, and we set it to condense into singularities. Now we need to provide it with 256,000 of one item and I was thinking maybe we can use water like this does it work yes so basically it's counting milli buckets not buckets it's super fast as always one tiny TNT one singularity one ender dust and boom <coughs> And we have quantum entangled singularities. I have already set in the patterns. We are going to need 16 quantum rings and we need two quantum link chambers. I have just noticed that out of the original eight P2P tunnels that I installed on the controller, we're using all of them. I do have enough space down here to add eight more, but I was thinking maybe we should expand the controller just in case. <laughs> Why is it glitched out? I don't know what was wrong with the controller, but now it seems to be okay. We just hooked them up to the cable and we should be good to go. So again, for those of you who don't know, a quantum ring from Applied Energistics is basically wireless networking and you make it like so. You need eight quantum rings, and one chamber in the center. And I am actually going to hook it up to a P2P tunnel so that we can extract 32 channels from the other side. I could have also used a dense cable, but maybe we need more than 32 channels and I don't want to fill in this place with a lot of cables. One quantum entangled singularity goes over here and we make the same structure at our island and the other one goes inside this one. Of course, it's also going to require power. So I did bring an energy acceptor and now we should be fine, right? 
Yes. If I put a terminal over here, we have access to our applied energistic system. Very good. And the reason that I'm mentioning this is because I did manage to make some of the items off camera and you might be wondering why I have them. We just need to pick up our containers and go to the island. Oh, and by the way, I'm not actually moving the small containers and the extractor, I'm just moving the big ones. These guys will stay here so that I can find them again. I have set up a very small perimeter and I think we can get down to business. Anyway, the way that you craft everything in this mod pack is that you need to infuse the items with the elements. How do you do that? You're going to need an element container and then you're going to need an element infuser on top. So let us say that we want to make earth crystals. What we have to do is that we need to put an inert crystal on the infuser, it will be infused and we get our earth crystal. You can also automate the infuser by having a hopper on top and if I drop an inert crystal inside, it will work. Obviously you cannot extract from the bottom because if you put a hopper down here, it's hooked up to the element container and not the infuser. We are going to use import buses, but the mod itself also offers you an instrument output retriever, which is basically like a hopper that will extract the items. Now that we know the basics, let us try and automate it. So we're going to have an interface over here and I'm not exactly sure, but I think it has to be facing towards the infuser. If I make a pattern for air crystals, put it inside our interface, we should be able to order some. Yes, it's now craftable. Can you make me 11? Yes, it can. Very good. That was really fast. <laughs> it crafted everything? Actually, you do need a filter on the import bus because otherwise it will just import the inert crystal. I have set up the patterns for the rest of the crystals and we can auto craft all of them. So if I want 10 fire ones, we can just craft it. We are going to need a lot of crystals eventually, so I think auto crafting it is a wise decision. But it is not just the crystals, there are other items that we have to craft, like the white rock. And that is basically stone and earth. So we need to extend our filtering system and add you to the whitelist. Another item is drenched iron, which is iron infused by water. Then we need burnt glass, which is glass infused by fire. Now that our system knows how to make the basics, we can teach it to make us pipes. And also the element containers. I am actually going to order 16 big element containers because we need a lot of elements. Oh, the animation is actually nice. I like it. Of course, the main reason that we need a lot of element containers is that we're consuming the elements inside these ones, so we need to replace them. I'm imagining something like this for all the four elements so that we will have a huge reserve. Another reason that we need more than one container is that the infuser is not the only device in this mod which requires element in order to infuse items. There's another device which is called element binder and I think we at least have to automate two of them. One of them is for the swift alloy ingot, but since I'm not exactly sure, we're at least going to try and automate all four of them anyways. Uh, not today, but you know, eventually. For today, we're just going to try and automate the production of swift alloy. And that's it. Then we will call it a day. For using the binder, there is a teeny tiny trick. All the ingredients have to be in the correct order. And I did actually check, if you drop gold, then redstone, then air crystal, and then the drenched iron, you're not going to get the swift alloy. Luckily, if you set the pattern like this, your applied energistic system will export the items based on this priority. So I'm just hoping that there will not be any issues, but we can check. We're going to order, I don't know, five? Let's see what happens. Yes, it's working. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not push the crafting items if the inventory contains items. That's good. Let us try this one more time. Okay, that is working. Yeah, it does work. We are out of air. <laughs> but we did manage to get it. It's fine. Actually, just for demonstration purposes, I can switch you with you and you should be fine, right? Yes, very good. I'm happy with this. But I'm guessing this will have to do for today because I think the episode is getting super long. Next episode, we will also try to get into spells and also maybe try and get a harvester. I don't know. Besides, in order to progress further, I need more elements. Anyway, guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.